welcome you all uh, in today's NPTEL online uh, certification uh, course lecture on mechatronics. Today we are going to talk about uh, the modeling of fluid systems. Okay. Uh, so, uh, here uh, uh, we will be dealing with how to model uh, the fluid systems uh, which includes uh, the modeling of uh, hydraulic system as well as modeling of pneumatic system. So, first uh, we will be looking at uh, the basic building blocks for each system and uh, after uh, the basic building block, I uh, uh, will be taking up the example, an example of each type uh, that is the hydraulic and pneumatic one and then uh, uh, at the end I will uh, summarize uh, both the systems. So, uh, hydraulic systems uh, uh, as we have seen uh, in case of electrical or mechanical system, here in hydraulic system also there are three basic building blocks okay. and these basic building blocks are hydraulic resistance, uh, hydraulic capacitance and hydraulic inertance okay. and uh, uh, these basic building blocks are equivalent to say electrical resistance uh, 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 and electrical capacitance and uh, uh, electrical inertance um, uh, in an electrical uh, system. Now, uh, so uh, for the uh, hydraulic system, okay, uh, the input is uh, usually the volumetric uh, flow rate, and the output is the uh, pressure uh, difference. Okay, and uh, this is equivalent to uh, uh, if we talk about uh, electrical circuit. So uh, it's equivalent to the electrical current uh, in the electrical system. That is the input and output. Uh, as the uh, electrical uh, pressure difference okay, in the electrical system. Now, uh, coming to the classification of uh, uh, fluid system, so uh, as all of you are aware, the fluid system can be classified into uh, two types that is the hydraulic and the pneumatic one. Okay. In case of hydraulic, the fluid is liquid and it is uncompressible, whereas um, in case of pneumatic, the fluid is gas and it is uh, compressible. Okay. So, uh, we will be looking at uh, both uh, these hydraulic and pneumatic systems uh, today because in a mechatronic system, um, uh, uh, mechatronic um, uh, uh, systems a subsystem may uh, consist of either hydraulic or pneumatic uh, part. Okay, so, it is very important for us to know how do we model this hydraulic and pneumatic part. So, first of all let us take the hydraulic resistance. Okay, so, uh, this hydraulic uh, resistance is actually uh, it is resistance to flow uh, due to liquid flowing uh, through a valve or through a variable uh, pipe diameter. Okay, so, if you look at uh, this valve uh, this is the direction uh, uh, through, uh, in which uh, your uh, fluid flow takes place and uh, this basically uh, um, uh, the uh, valve is operated by a, a, a lever uh, to open or close this one. Okay. And uh, when the liquid flows through uh, this valve there is a uh, drop in pressure. Okay. And uh, similarly, if uh, the liquid is flowing through a variable pipe diameter, here you can say uh, this say th this is the pipe diameter D1 here and uh, D2 here. So, when it is flowing through the variable pipe diameter, uh, you are going to have the drop in pressure. Okay. And, uh, so, the relationship between the uh, volume flow rate uh, of liquid 
through the resistive element and uh, resulting uh, pressure difference is given by P1 minus P2 is equal to Q times R basically. Okay. Uh, here Q is actually uh, the uh, flow rate. Okay. So, here Q is your uh, flow rate. All right. So, uh, uh, here uh, this P1 minus P2 is equal to QR and this is actually uh, 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 we can uh, take an analogy uh, with the electrical circuit where V is equal to IR. Okay. So, here R is the electrical resistance here I am talking about R as the hydraulic resistance and as I said current uh, here uh, is analogous to uh, the uh, volume uh, uh, rate of flow of liquid and uh, the voltage is analogous to the pressure difference at the two sides. Okay. Uh, so, uh, what does this relationship means basically? So, this relationship actually means that uh, uh, higher the value of resistance, okay, uh, uh, higher uh, is going to be the pressure drop for a given rate of flow. Okay. So, uh, so if uh, here um, I keep say uh, this Q as constant, so if my R increases, my P1 minus P2 will also be increasing. So, uh, what does that means? That means that if there is a more resistance, uh, 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 hydro, uh, more resistance, um, hydraulic resistance, then you are going to have the more pressure drop. Okay. Uh, so, uh, that is there and this equation assumes a linear relationship. Uh, such hydraulic linear resistances occur uh, with uh, orderly flow through uh, say uh, capillary tube or through porous plug. Okay. And there are um, uh, situation where uh, these resistances are uh, non-linear resistances uh, uh, and they occur uh, for example, flow through sharp is orifice or uh, if your flow is going to be uh, turbulent. So, after uh, the hydraulic resistance, let us look at uh, uh, another important building block which is the hydraulic capacitance. Okay. So, uh, uh, it uh, basically hydraulic capacitance uh, basically describes energy storage with a liquid uh, where it is stored in the form of a potential energy and uh, we can take an example of say liquid stored uh, inside a tank. Okay. So, a height of a liquid in a tank and uh, uh, for such a case actually the capacitance uh, relates the rate of change of volume in the container and uh, that is equal to um, the volume uh, rate in minus volume rate out basically. Okay. Uh, so, uh, 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 hydraulic capacitance relates with that. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, uh, say uh, we have a tank over here say of cross sectional area A and there is Q1 flow in and Q2 flow out from it okay. and say uh, uh, there is a liquid of height H and say uh, it means that uh, at the top you have a pressure P1 and at this point uh, say at the bottom you have pressure uh, P2. Okay. So, uh, the you, you see that this uh, uh, the net uh, uh, volume uh, which is going to be inside uh, 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 that, that, uh, that will be actually uh, or the uh, liquid inside is going to be equal to the volume flow uh, rate, uh, rate of change of volume. Okay. So, uh, this Q1 minus Q2 is equal to dV by dt and you see that we uh, know V is equal to basically AH where uh, your A is your uh, area of cross section and H is uh, actually this is your A and this is your height. So, V is equal to AH. Okay. So, I can substitute that. So, I get Q1 minus Q2 is equal to A dH by dt. Okay. Uh, but uh, you see uh, the pressure difference between input and output uh, say uh, here is P and this P we can write as 
used rho g h and so I can relate h as p by the rho g okay, uh, where uh, rho is the uh, liquid density which we are assuming to be constant in case of the hydraulic fluid flow. Okay. So, uh, so, this q1 minus q2 actually I can write as a and I put h as p by rho g. So, I get uh, a by rho g dp by uh, dt. So, this is my q1 minus uh, uh, q2. So, q1 minus q2 is a by rho g dp by dt and I am defining this term as the hydraulic capacitance. Okay. So, if I do that then this my minus q1 minus q2 is c dp by dt or from here I can write p as uh, uh, 1 by c integral of q1 minus q2 into dt. And this uh, you see that uh, if I compare this with a electrical capacitor, so for that uh, you see c is equal to q by v. So, and q I can write as integral of i dt, uh, okay. so integral i dt by c over here. So, we can just compare this. this this P is uh, analogous to V, 1 by C is uh, uh, say uh, the, here C is the hydraulic capacitance, here it is the electrical capacitance and this is your analogous to current. Next let us look at the hydraulic uh, inertance. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, it is uh, actually the equivalent to the inductance in the electrical circuit. Okay. And uh, so, uh, let us assume that um, uh, say uh, we have a uh, cross sectional area constant cross sectional area uh, uh, duct or pipe uh, through which a fluid is flowing and say at an instant uh, say uh, in this length I have got a mass m. Okay. And let us assume the uh, uh, say uh, pressure this side left hand side as P1. So, we have the force acting over here uh, will be P1A and at the right hand side it is pressure P2. So, force acting here will be P2A and this actually the force difference which is going to be responsible for the acceleration of the liquid. Okay. So, I am writing this F1 minus F2 as mass into uh, uh, is equal to mass into acceleration. I can write acceleration as dv by dt and so uh, my p1 minus p2 into a uh, m I substitute at rho a l uh, over here okay, for this cross section uh, and uh, v dv by dt. So, p1 minus p2 by a uh, this uh, rho a l again you see q is equal to a into v uh, that is area into velocity basically. Okay. Uh, so, uh, velocity will be q by a. So, I put it q by a this a this a gets cancelled. So, I get p1 minus p2 as rho l by a dq by dt. Okay, so, P1 minus P2 is rho L by A dQ by dt. So, uh, this is basically uh, uh, I can uh, write this rho L by A as uh, say uh, inertance, hydraulic inertance. So, my I get P1 minus P2 is equal to I dQ by dt. And you see that uh, for electrical system we define uh, inductance as V is equal to L D by uh, D I by dt. So, uh, we have the uh, analogous uh, relationship. So, after uh, uh, seeing uh, this let us take an ex example okay, uh, of uh, a one tank system alright. Now, uh, uh, here uh, we have basically uh, uh, in the one tank system say uh, there is a tank here and a liquid is flowing at the rate uh, say q1 over here and uh, it is passing through a valve basically here. And and uh, uh, through wall it is passing and the discharge here is Q2. Okay. Uh, so, in this system uh, we can consider uh, or this system uh, 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 we can identify the building blocks in this system and these are uh, uh, the uh, hydraulic resistance because of this wall and uh, uh, hydraulic capacitance because of uh, the liquid of a certain height inside this tank. Okay. And we can assume that uh, 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 liquid is uh, 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 that is the flow rate changes very slowly. So, uh, we can neglect the effect of uh, uh, 
inert ions ok. So, with this uh, let us take uh, uh, this example. So, uh, we define capacitor as q 1 uh, minus q 2 is equal to C d p by d t ok. And uh, uh, let us assume that the rate at which liquid leaves the container is same at the rate as which liquid leaves the valve ok. Uh, so, I can put p 1 minus p 2 is equal to r q 2. So, this is my uh, equation which I have got from the hydraulic resistance ok and this is the equation which I have got from the hydraulic capacitance ok. So, uh, this is there and now next what we do is basically we combine these two equations ok. So, to combine that I uh, do some uh, uh, simplification. Uh, so, the P I can write uh, this uh, pressure difference as rho g h and this is R q 2. So, I get q 2 as rho g h by R and then I can substitute this q 2 in this uh, equation uh, of the capacitance. So, basically this is what I get q 1 minus uh, rho g h by r is equal to uh, C d p by d t and q 1 minus rho g h by r is equal to C I have already uh, defined as A by rho g and P is rho g h ok. So, uh, I define this one uh, substitute over there. So, this is what I get over here ok and uh, again this rho g and that rho g will be getting cancelled. So, I get A d s by d t uh, here and this one. So, then uh, we uh, I take the parameter related with h one side. So, I have A d s by d t plus rho g h by r uh, is equal to q 1. So, we can say uh, here it is a uh, first order differential equation in terms of h in the left hand side and right hand side we have the forcing function or uh, what we call it as the input for this case which is the volume flow rate of the liquid in the tank ok. So, uh, here we can see that the height of liquid in the container depends on the rate of input of liquid in the container ok. So, uh, uh, this container as a physical system has input q 1 and output what we are uh, measuring the pressure difference as h ok. So, this way uh, uh, here uh, what we have done basically uh, in this example I have tried to combine the two building blocks which are hydraulic resistance and the hydraulic capacitance ok in order to get the system equation ok. And from here we have got the system equation uh, which basically relates height of the liquid inside the tank and the uh, the input forcing function or the input uh, which is the uh, volume flow rate into the tank. Now, uh, let us look at the pneumatic system. Now, uh, pneumatic system uh, uh, differ from uh, uh, liquid in the sense that uh, uh, with pressure the volume changes and hence the density changes ok. So, uh, that is the difference and here also we have the three basic building blocks that is the pneumatic resistance, pneumatic capacitance and the pneumatic inertance. So, with the help of these three building block we will try to uh, 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 first I am going to define these three basic building blocks and then with the help of these three basic building blocks I will try to take an example to illustrate how we derive the system system equation of a pneumatic system ok. So, first of all let us look at the pneumatic resistance. Pneumatic resistance is defined as basically uh, P 1 minus P 2 is equal to R m dot where r this is r d m by d t ok. So, basically uh, we can um, if we want to compare it with the electrical system I can compare as V is equal to r i. So, V is analogous to the pressure drop i here is analogous to the uh, mass flow rate basically d m by d t. Ok. Uh, so, uh, that is there. In case of uh, uh, hydraulic system if you, uh, you can recall we have just uh, uh, taken analogous of I as the volume flow rate, but in uh, pneumatic system we take uh, the uh, mass flow rate. 
ok. Next element is the pneumatic capacitance ok. Uh, pneumatic capacitance is due to the compressibility of the gases ok. And uh, this is comparable to uh, the compression of a spring which stores energy basically ok. Uh, so, uh, 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 similar is the case uh, with the uh, pneumatic capacitance ok. So, to derive the expression relationship for that let there be a container of volume V and uh, let uh, the mass flow rate entering, entering the container be m1 dot and the mass flow rate leaving the container be m2 dot ok. So, then the uh, rate of change of mass in the container is basically m1 dot minus m2 dot. Now, this m1 dot minus m2 dot is basically uh, 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 we can define as d by dt of rho v ok. Uh, rho is density and v is basically uh, your volume ok. So, that uh, I will be getting mass basically. So, d rho v by dt ok. Uh, so, this uh, I can expand uh, here because my density and volume both are changing here. So, I can expand this. So, rho dv by dt plus v uh, uh, d rho by dt and this term I can uh, write uh, a little this way that is rho dv by dp into dp by dt plus v uh, d rho by dt. Now, uh, for an ideal gas we know that the ideal gas uh, equation is PV is equal to MRT. So, from here the P is uh, M by V RT and M by V if I represent it by our rho that is the uh, density. So, P is rho RT or I can write rho is equal to P by RT ok. So, d rho by dt is basically 1 by RT dp by dt. Now, I can uh, substitute for this d rho by dt over uh, here ok that is 1 by RT dp by uh, dt ok. And now, next so, uh, here uh, 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 this is uh, uh, this is my uh, uh, equation uh, which uh, I have seen for the rate of change of uh, uh, mass flow rate ok. So, d rho by dt I just derived 1 by rt uh, dp by dt and if I substitute it over here this is what I am going to get ok. And you see that I have got dp by dt here, dp by dt here also. So, I can take that dp by dt out. So, I have rho dv by dp plus v by rt into dp by dt ok. Or I can simplify this further as m1 uh, dot minus m2 dot is equal to if I represent this by say a term capacitance C1 and this as by another term say C2, I can write this as C1 plus C2 to dp by uh, dt. Now, here this C1 is what basically this is the pneumatic capacitance due to the change in volume of the container ok. So, uh, this rho dv by dp and uh, the other one that is V by RT it is the pneumatic capacitance due to the compressibility of the gas. Now, next element uh, let us take the pneuma uh, pneumatic inertance. Ok. And it uh, you know uh, it is due to the pressure drop necessary to accelerate a block of gas ok. So, we can derive the relationship for that using Newton, uh, Newton second law which uh, is uh, uh, f is equal to m a or uh, um, d by d t of m v. And this force is provided basically here in this case uh, by the pressure difference ok. Uh, so, if uh, a is the cross section area of the block being accelerated then I can write P 1 minus P t into A this is the force basically and this is D of m v by d t. And what is this m v actually this is a rho uh, into the volume basically that will be giving me the mass and velocity I can write as uh, Q by A that is the discharge divided by the area of cross section. So, basically from here this this get cancelled. So, I get rho L Q. Okay. So, P 1 minus P 2 uh, into A is D of uh, rho L Q by D T or this is L uh, D of rho Q by D T ok. And uh, this is rho Q is actually what? Uh, it is actually your uh, mass flow 
rate ok. So, this is L dm by dt. Remember here L is uh, actually uh, the uh, uh, length of the uh, uh, section ok uh, which we are uh, considering here and whose um, ok. So, uh, that is there. So, my P 1 minus P 2 is actually L by A dm dot by dt or P 1 minus P 2 I this L by A uh, I can uh, give a term that is I and uh, this is uh, uh, L by A is the inner tense. So, uh, this way I can define the uh, pneumatic uh, inner tense. Okay. Next, uh, let us take an example after defining all the three pneumatic component, let us take an example of a bellow. Okay. Uh, so, suppose in this bellow, um, okay, there is a constriction uh, uh, over here and that constriction provide a resistance R and uh, the, 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 there is a capacitance of the bellow, uh, say uh, uh, we can take a capacitance of the bellow and uh, uh, we can assume the inner tense to be negligible the, uh, since the flow rate changes uh, 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 very slowly. Okay. So, uh, with that uh, uh, the mass flow rate uh, into the bellow uh, can be uh, given by uh, P 1 minus P 2 is equal to R m dot. This is basically similar to V is equal to R i or this we have given from the uh, uh, resistance okay, pneumatic resistance relationship uh, we get this one uh, where P 1 is the pressure before the constriction and P 2 is the pressure after the constriction. Okay, and R is the pneumatic resistance. So, uh, this is the relationship and uh, all the gas that flows into this below uh, you can see that it remains in the below. Okay. Uh, so, thus the capacitance of the below uh, we can use the uh, same equation m 1 dot minus m 2 dot is equal to C 1 plus C 2 and D P 2 by D 2 uh, here because uh, we are considering below, below pressure inside the below is P 2. So, I am using this term over here and there is no mass leaving. Uh, so, I can take this m 2 to be equal to 0. So, m 1 dot is C 1 plus C 2 d P 2 by uh, d T. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, uh, my uh, equation. Okay. So, m 1 dot is uh, this one and now, so this is our uh, equation of what we call it as pneumatic uh, capacitance. Okay and uh, this is the relationship of uh, uh, pneumatic uh, resistance ok. Now, I can combine both of these ok. Uh, so, uh, uh, here P 1 minus P 2 by R is equal to m 1 dot and that m 1 dot I can equate to C 1 plus C 2 d P 2 by d 2 ok. And then I can uh, simplify this equation basically. I multiply with R uh, this side ok. Uh, so, I get R C 1 plus C 2 d P 2 by d T plus P 2 is equal to P 1 ok. So, here uh, uh, this uh, we can see that uh, uh, right uh, left hand side we have the uh, P 2. Uh, differential uh, first order differential equation in terms of P 2 is there and which tells uh, the uh, how the pressure is varies inside the below and uh, here we have got the forcing function ok or the input that is the pressure uh, P 1 ok. Uh, now, uh, I can uh, further simplify uh, this equation or I can write this equation in terms of the displacement of the below. Okay. Uh, so, if I assume that my bellow works as a spring and say the bellow has got a stiffness k and uh, it uh, gets displaced by x, then uh, uh, we can write the force as uh, uh, k is equal to x. Okay, and this uh, force is the force considering the expansion or contraction and it depends basically on the P 2. Okay. Uh, uh, so, that is there. So, F is equal to uh, our P 2 A. So, I can substitute over here. So, P 2 A is K x. So, I get P 2 is equal to K x by A and now I can substitute for this P 2 in our uh, this 
uh, equation which we just derived for the below ok. Uh, so, uh, I can put it here d uh, k x by a now here you see k and a are constant. So, I can take them out. So, I get uh, this differential equation uh, in terms of x ok. So, here in the left hand side I have got the first order differential equation. Uh, in terms of the displacement of the below and uh, uh, right hand side we have the forcing function which is the uh, um, uh, pressure of the air which is supplied uh, into the uh, below before the uh, construction ok. Uh, so, uh, yes yeah, so this way uh, using the two building blocks that is the pneumatic resistance and pneumatic capacitance we could derive the system equation for the below ok. And this equation tells us basically that uh, if you are going to change the pressure P 1 how your uh, displacement of below is going to take place ok. Uh, here uh, in this equation the C 1 and C 2 for the below can be evaluated like this. Uh, you see C 1 we have seen is rho d V by uh, d p 2 in this case and v is a x ok uh, area of cross section of the below and the displacement of the below. So, your c 1 is rho I just substitute for v. So, uh, this is a d x by d p 2 and for the below p 2 a is k x we have already seen. So, p 2 I can write as k x by a I substitute for that. So, this is what I get the value for c 1. Okay. And similarly for C 2 we know that it is the basically V by R T and this V is actually A x. So, this is A x by R T. So, this way we can evaluate C 1 and C 2 in terms of the uh, below parameters and uh, the constants. Okay. So, uh, uh, here I provide a uh, summary. Uh, of uh, uh, hydraulic and pneumatic building blocks. So, we have seen the uh, say inertance, capacitance and resistance, inertance, capacitance and redis resistance for hydraulic as well as pneumatic and these are the equations basically. So, in case of hydraulics you can see that we have the volume flow rate. Uh, and uh, uh, here relations are in uh, terms of uh, volume flow rate. Uh, we are getting evaluating volume flow rate whereas, in case of pneumatic we are evaluating the mass flow rate ok. And uh, 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 the uh, right hand side we have uh, all uh, same terms ok. Uh, similarly, uh, we can uh, evaluate the energy stored in the inductor and capacitor as well as uh, the energy dissipated by the resistor ok. So, here this is half I Q square and here this is half C P 1 minus P 2 whole square and here this is 1 by R P 1 minus P 2 whole square ok. And here I have dot M dot square in place of Q square rest of the things are same ok. So, uh, uh, here are uh, the references uh, uh, it is you can refer uh, uh, Bolton mechatronics uh, if you want to further read it do uh, further exercise um, on the modeling of hydraulic and pneumatic systems. Thank you.